Hey guys and gals, how you doing? Greg Silverman here for another session of Come Learn With Me, where we take our favorite articles and all the articles that are most favored and most shared and liked, and uh, we read through them together. So come learn with me. This one looks very interesting. So let's jump right in. China and the US are locked in a superpower tech war to win the 21st century. <clears throat> in a calm workspace above the bustling Huiqing by electronics market in Shenzhen, China, engineer Zhang Chang reaches for a metal part sitting on the desk behind him. It might not look special, but it's a powerful example of why his UK-based tech startup has chosen China's Silicon Valley. A quote for that part in a factory in the US would be for several thousands of dollars, and they probably quote your lead time maybe two to three weeks, Chang says. The same piece we can get back in three days from a factory here at less than $100. Wow. Chang's company is building a prototype agricultural robot, robot that kills weeds by spraying hot oil on them, potentially solving the problem of herbicide-resistant weeds plaguing the world's farms. Okay, that's interesting. Yong Chang tours the world's largest tech market in Shenzhen. One of a growing number of tech startups basing themselves in Shenzhen, and this just over the border from Hong Kong. Until the 1980s, Shenzhen was a sleepy fishing village with fewer than 100,000 inhabitants. <clears throat> Today, there's a sprawling metropolis of high rise towers and hopes to 12 and a half million residents, as well, well as many of China's tech titans, including Huawei, which has its headquarters here. Okay, Huawei. All right. Um, Xinjiang Bay, the world's largest electronics market, is a mecca of hardware, says Chen, where you can find parts to build any type of electronic gadget all in one place and at scale. I think it's really true what they say. A month in Shenzhen is similar to four months anywhere else in the world. I like that. Put this in our keywords. While the US is long, had the edge in tech, China was catching up fast, investing heavily in AI, robotics, 5G, and 6G microchips and surveillance technology. US President Joe Biden is planning a 330 billion package to rev up the US's investment in R&D. Having noted its strategic competition with China is nothing less than a battle to win the 21st century. We have this picture. Until a few decades ago, the main business Shenzhen was fishing. Now it's a sprawling metropolis often called China's Silicon Valley. Impressive. The so-called tech cold war is rapidly becoming the decisive battleground in the US-China superpower rivalry. The US has sought to contain China's rise as a tech power, banning Huawei's 5G network in the US and placing a virtual prohibition on US companies supplying software and components to Chinese tech companies. Good stuff. <clears throat> Last year, the Trump administration also moved to ban TikTok in the US, fearing the app could be stealing US users' personal data on behalf of the communist regime in Beijing. What do you all think? But analysts warn these skirmishes are only worsening, the digital iron curtain falling between China and the West. They say the world's been split into two competing and mutually exclusive tech ecosystems, each with its own internet, hardware, communications, and financial platforms. Wow, pretty cool, huh? The tech war is a world where you have two sets of countries with two rival stands, Abjit Walia, Deutsche Bank's global head of tech strategy says. Whether it's how you compute with TPCs, how you communicate with handsets, and everything that goes around electronically, you start to have two standards, with two internets. Back in 2019, Facebook's chief executive, Mark Zuckerberg, stood in front Two internets. Back in 2019, Facebook chief executive Mark Zuckerberg stood in front of a Georgetown University audience and sounded a warning. China, he said, was developing an online world unfamiliar to those in the West with its own values and platforms. China is building its own internet focused on different values and now is exporting their vision of the internet to other countries, Zuckerberg said. Chinese social media platform WeChat 
the Alibaba online marketplace and Baidu search engine have created a cyberspace distinct from one dominated by US tech titans such as Facebook, Amazon, and Google. Wow. James Green, the former Minister for Trade Affairs at the US Embassy in China, says China's internet divergence has been underway for a decade. The Chinese side decided that for domestic stability reasons, the Chinese internet had to be separate from the global internet, Green says. I think the Chinese leadership realized, hey, there are some technologies that we don't want to let foreigners in on, so we're just going to start to squeeze them out. Platforms like Facebook and Google were banned as the communist government created a protected market for Chinese tech firms that would willingly submit to Beijing's political demands. Few companies that have, have been thrust as squarely into the center of US China tech war as Huawei, which has been banned from supplying 5G hardware in many Western countries. I think that was the push from the Chinese government to say we need to have two ecosystems, a Chinese one and a global one, he says. And then I think the response of the Trump administration on what they've done on Huawei and then semiconductors is in some ways a natural one. China's buildup of its own technological ecosystem has only continued, expanding beyond internet platforms to operating systems, CPU architectures, satellite communication networks, and payment systems, with little interoperability with Western equivalents. Trump administration sanctions may have hurt Huawei's smartphone business by cutting off the Chinese phone makers' access to Google Android mobile operating system. But according to the company consumer, company's consumer business group, CEO Richard Yu, it forced Huawei to focus on developing its own Harmony operating system. The company has really started building phones without US microchips. Chinese President Xi Jinping is pushing the nation to achieve technological self-sufficiency in areas like microchip manufacturing to wean itself off its dependence on the US. According to Deutsche Bank's Apit Walia, a growing digital divide could soon force individuals, companies, and even nations to choose a system or bear the cost of struggling the two regimes. Companies and institutions will have to find a way to either have two architectures and two sets of gadgets, while they said. The same will go towards handsets, where users have to have two different phones, one on which uses WeChat and one on which uses Gmail. That's a freak scenario, which can actually be realistic at some point. The tech war has casualties on both sides, and it's going to cost the world dearly. The Deutsche Bank report estimates the cost of a tech war is more than 3.5 trillion over the next five years. Wow. Um, yes, you can see that one. The rival financial system. The global financial system is emerging as a new and disruptive front in the tech war. One key way the US exerts control of the financial system is through the SWIFT international payment network. Every day, five trillion is transferred around the world using the system. If the Biden administration chooses, it could sanction or cut off Chinese banks and corporations from international financial markets, causing immense damage to the Chinese economy. Yeah, okay, I think I know where this is going. The sign indicating digital yuan is referred to as E. CNY at a shopping mall in Shanghai, China, the currency could undermine the US dominance of the financial system. The controls infrastructure gives the US immense power to trace financial flows around the globe, as well as to cut entities off from using this infrastructure, Aditi Kumar from the Harvard Kennedy School says. The SWIFT system enabled America to arrest and charge Huawei's chief financial officer, Meng Wanzhou, with violating US sanctions against Iran. Wow. Even if she didn't step into the US, she used the system. Right? She remains under house arrest in Canada. And the case has outraged the Chinese leadership who took retaliatory actions by arresting Canadian citizens in China. China's already responding to this new financial threat by making its national currency, the yuan, digital. In 2020, China became the first major economy to test a digital currency in four of its cities. The aim is to internationalize this new system as quickly as possible to undercut the world's reliance on the US dollar and SWIFT system. It boosts trade. Our influence will, you know, go bigger and bigger, says Qi Qiang from Chinese International Monetary Authority, Monetary Institute. The 
TikTok. Now with digital currency, our friends in Myanmar, Vietnam, Laos can download an app and they can put their money into the authorized exchange post and be issued the Chinese digital currency and they can use it for trade immediately, Ku Kiang says. Aditi Kumar says, this move from Beijing has Washington worried. Beijing would be capable of avoiding US oversight and sanction, US sanctions with the di digital infrastructure developed by China, the US could lose the ability to monitor or sanction. Yeah. So a great article, huh? Copycats no more. In Shenzhen, the trade war appears to have little impact on the pace of Chinese innovation. From an engineering or technical standpoint, it's almost like the center of everything that's made in the physical world, says American entrepreneur Garrett Winther, who now has a portfolio of 200 startups in the high-tech hub. Two years ago, China reached a significant milestone surpassing the United States for the number of global patents it filed for the first time. China registered many 60,000 patents, 1,000 more than the US, and most of them came from Shenzhen. Wow. Communist conception of China is that it's a big factory, right? Winter says. In reality, there are lots of expertise, knowledge, and understanding. There's always going to be economic ups and downs, but the underlying drive that's happening in the culture of China right now is going to continue to advance new opportunities and new growth that I think we're just not even seeing coming yet. America can prevail and maintain its technological edge, but China's spending a big, big on high-tech research, announcing a five-year plan with $1.8 trillion to dominate AI, robotics, 6G, and other technologies by 2035. 1.8 trillion, yeah. I mean, our infrastructure bills, what, a trillion? Then uh, social infrastructure? Three billion, three trillion. James Green, former Minister of Trade and Affairs at the US Embassy in China, says the tech war expanded under Trump is not going to be resolved anytime soon. Some of the issues, particularly around technology and technology ecosystems, are ones that will be with us for years to come, he says. Oh, it's a great article. Well, thanks for joining for that. Thanks for uh, learning with me. Come learn with me and uh, tune in for some other articles pretty soon. You all take care. Greg Silverman from the virtual Sydney behind me, out.